Hello everyone and welcome back to the TEW 2020 run of AEW. We are here on the third week of August in 2021, starting off with our Dark and our BTE. Some Young Buck stuff. Some Dark Order stuff. And then we see Frederick Hurst wearing a very nice looking suit. He begins to talk about the sponsors of the company. And in particular, he starts to talk about the video game. As he's talking, however, Brian Pillman Jr. casually comes over, talks to him, and he just straight up says that Hurst really annoys him. And Hurst seems confused about this, but he still does apologize about that. But he's like, hey, I'm, I'm running a commercial right now. And Pillman says that commercials need to be memorable, so he'll do something to help him make it memorable by beating the crap out of Frederick Hurst, ending it by throwing Hurst into a locker. Uh, especially right now, the BTE segments are kind of lame. Um, I'm going to try to revamp everything after All Out, which I'm going to be... I think last year I had it at the first week of September. I'm going to be moving it to the, sun, uh, the last day of August, so that Sunday week for August. So next week will be our go-home show, but that's besides the point. We start off with... Uh, Utami Hayashishida defeating Yuka Sakazaki. And a very nice performance by Yuka Sakazaki, actually. Motor City Machine Guns defeat the Gun Club. Jeff Cobb defeats Five. Fred Yehi defeats Eddie Edwards. Miro defeats Jake Hager. Jungle Boy defeats Dragon Lee. The Future defeats the Cross Brothers. And to end things off, Sammy Guevara defeats Jonathan Gresham. And I do have something planned with Gresham, but moving on to Dynamite in just a second. Our show of Dynamite begins with Zack Sabre Jr. defeating Mr. Brody Lee in just about 17 minutes. Now, before I move on, I will just say that this is going to be a little bit different of a Dynamite than normal. Uh, I had booked it normally, so, you know, actually wrote out all of the angles, wrote out everything, started recording, game crashed, went all the way back to Dark, um, didn't have anything booked on Dark, so, I still, you know, I still remembered what I had all booked, so, I will just be going through, uh, kind of more summarizing what happens, even more so than usual, but... Everything should be the same as it was. Basically, after this, Rick Stark's music hits right afterwards. Uh, he says that, well, uh, ZSJ was a very good competitor. He's, you know, one of the marquee free agents that was picked up in this past year. Lots of big pickups in the past year. Uh, he still isn't quite good enough to be on Ricky Stark's level. Starks insists that ZSJ will need to... He'll need to do a little bit better than having... To take 17 minutes to take down a 40-some year old Brody Lee. Uh, so, Ricky Starks, next week he's going to show how to quickly take out a tune opponent. And he's promised to win the belt at All Out. In the triple threat between him, Garza, and Sabre Jr. After this, Darby has a vignette where he's talking to Ace Austin. Uh, basically, Darby says that... Uh, you know, he's accepted Ace's match at All Out, he's going to accept the terms, but, you know, he still needs to come up with terms of his own, so he just says, alright, if I win, I will never join the Inner Circle. So, no matter what, at All Out, depending on who, you know, no matter who wins that match, the Inner Circle is going to have some big changes, either never being able to go after Darby Allen, or they will get Darby, or they will get Darby, which is a huge pickup for anyone, because Darby, an amazing performer. After this, Penelope Ford and Vipers defeat Gail Kim and cheerleader Melissa. And then, uh, so after this, we have Garza, he comes with the ring, he calls up Mayu Batani for the Rose Garden, says that Mayu's never, you know, that Mayu, she's been getting a bunch of spotlight, she, you know, she denied Garza, so that, so because of that, Rose Garden are going to be able, are they're going to take the spotlight. However, Sheeta then walks out. Sheeta says that, uh, you know, if they're going to go after Mayu, they're going to also have to go through her. After that, Anna Jay and Ty Conti run up behind. They attack Sheeta and Mayu. Jay picks up Sheeta's mic. 
and just says that, you know what, I don't really care about the Rose Garden, however, I'm not going to let Sheeta get away. So, at All Out, we'll have a six, uh, a three-team tag match, six people in total. So, we will have uh, Ford and Vipress versus Mayu and Sheeta versus Jay and Tay. So, that'll be an interesting match. Unfortunate that Vipress and Ford have a poor chemistry. After this, we get the debut of Antonio Banks. Heyman uh, brings someone into his office, and it is shown up to be Antonio Banks. Banks is implied to be a big investor into the company, and he asks for the, quote, list of clients from Heyman. Heyman hands Banks a clipboard, and Banks kind of looks over for it for a bit before being like, all right, but I will have my marquee client show up at All Out. Uh, so... Antonio Banks, uh, also uh, otherwise known as- Ooh, that's great. Because he's not gonna wrestle. Anyways, um, Banks, so obviously formerly known as MVP. Uh, WWE decided not to resign him. I'm bringing him in to serve as a manager. Try to put some, you know, bring some people over. In addition, I believe, if I've done the math correct, this is on the day of All Out. We have a very big free agent signing, uh, so we will see who that is, and they will be working with Antonio Banks. After this, uh, Maki Ito defeats Raven Creed. But right, uh, pretty much right away, Ash of Fire rushes into the ring, spears Maki, uh, the, the Queen's Court are taking out Abaddon on the outside, Ashley Flair gets Maki into a figure eight leg lock, and basically just says that, you know, this is the same thing that's going to happen at All Out, and that Maki won't be able to walk out of All Out. After this, uh, Devitt, he's just in a room, he says, hey, Kenny, I'm gonna go after you, uh, you know, we both know how wrestling works, you'll go one and one in the series, you're gonna have a match three, what a coincidence, there's a pay-per-view coming up, we're gonna have that match at pay-per-view. He just has his three guys around, so that there's no shenanigans going on. They're not going to cheat. Devitt's not going to cheat. He wants this to be an honorable match. No help from any side, you know, on either side. Nothing of the sort. Then we get Takahashi's in-ring debut as he defeats Carlito Colon, the Fisherman Suplex. Uh, Carlito, right now he's actually one half of the NWA Tag Team Champions as well as... Uh, I forget exactly what the title is called. It's the NWA mid-card title. Uh, Carlito also owns that. He's an absolute star in NWA. I have brought him in. He's a star in NWA, and he's also Carlito. So, you know, can't really go wrong with that. After this, uh, pretty much right away, Pac slides into the ring. He just absolutely wallops Takahashi in the chest, in the stomach, with a kendo stick. Takahashi doubles over in the back, uh, keeps wailing on Takahashi for a while, eventually the best friends come out, uh, all four of them, because we do also have Kylie Ray now in the best friends, Brutality Inc. come out, however, uh, Pillman Jr. is notably missing, eventually backstage officials do manage to separate them, but as there's some medical staff checking on Takahashi on the outside, because he did take quite a few hits from the kendo stick, and these are suspiciously buff medical officials, Ryan Pillman Jr. hops over the railing with a steel chair, takes out the medical officials, slams Takahashi in the head with the chair. Uh, Takahashi, he's down, he's seemingly unconscious. Pillman Jr. wants to make sure, hits him one more time, drops the chair, casually walks back, and as, as the rest of the people are getting escorted back, also Shotzi kind of showed up just to help out the best friends, She's not associated with the best friends, Takahashi's not associated with the best friends, but they are going right after Pac, so, yeah. After this, we have, uh, Jake Roberts, he's seen backstage, he's talking into a camera, and he says, Alright, well, we don't have any challengers for the pay-per-view. We, you know, we beat Midnight Dynamite, we beat the Young Bucks. Uh, they've already skipped over the Lucha Bros in the ranking, because Phoenix is injured. So... We don't really know what to do. Maybe they'll skip it again. Go for Proud and Powerful. At that point, Penta and Ray Phoenix, they rush in. They take out Matt Seidel. Take a little bit longer to take out Lance Arch, but they eventually do. They pin 
uh, Lance up, uh, not Lance, they pin Jake Roberts up against the wall, and they say, we're going to be ready for the pay-per-view. We're going to be ready for All Out. We're going to take those titles, whatever generic stuff, Lucha Bros. They will be ready. They will have a tune-up match next week. Next week, going to be a lot about tune-ups. Uh, this is effectively our go-home show. This is where I'm really going through announcing all the matches that I haven't announced already. Next week, lots of tune-ups. Um, I always have the problem of just doing a go-home a little bit too early. So, yeah. Then we have Brian Cage defeating Cody Rhodes. And right afterwards, uh, Samoa Joe, he shows up, he gets into the ring, talks with Brian Cage for a little bit. Eventually, Cage kind of walks away, hands up, like, alright, you know what, you do whatever. Joe, what a surprise, he chokes out Cody Rhodes, again. He does that a lot. And then, Joe eventually, after Cody has passed out, Joe gets up, and he just kind of, he gets real close to Cody, and just says, At All Out, same thing's going to happen to you. So, Joe, first Cody, will be at All Out. After this, we see Antonio Banks, he goes into the generic locker room, not, like, three of the personalized locker rooms for all of our really big names. Maybe even our stables have their own locker rooms. But there's one for just the other people, the undercard, even the mid-card. Banks walks into the men's locker room, he says, hey, I'm going to be recruiting people. Close the door. This takes about 30 seconds or so. And then Banks walks out, he's followed by the acclaimed. However, Banks doesn't seem to have a very happy look on his face. And we will find out why next week. And Banks already doing fantastic. In our main event, Kota Ibushi defeats Charles Betts. Just a very solid match. Uh, I forgot to put that... Uh, okay. MJF, he was supposed to be on commentary. I forgot to put him on commentary because I was kind of rushing through since I'd already booked the show and I didn't want to really do it again. Um, but MJF, he basically says, Hey, uh, Kota, you know... Good job, you beat Charles Betts. He's a good wrestler, but he's not as good as me because I'm the world champion. I have a tune-up match next week. Coda doesn't, uh, and MJF doesn't even want to see Coda. you know. That's Coda's last chance. That's his last chance to tune-up. He's not going to get a match on Dark, not going to get a match on Dynamite. It's just going to be Coda has to train for All Out. MJF doesn't have a tune-up, or MJF has a tune-up match for next week, but that's, you know, that's it. That's how MJF is going to be, he's going to be going in more prepared than Coda, presumably, and MJF doesn't want to see Coda until he has his, until in the cage, and Coda staring up at the lights. A 78 with something that sorta, kinda, I booked in about three minutes. Obviously, again, I had booked all of it before, but I had, so yeah, booked it before, um, Okay, it didn't really crash. I accidentally exited it out. It didn't save, uh, because there's some weird things with my taskbar, but that's besides the point. So, yeah, a 78 rating, very nice for what is effectively our go-home show, and I just have to remember to actually put all out to be after next week's Dynamite, which will be the actual go-home show, it's really gonna be the tune-up show.